So this is going to be a bit of a strange, a strange stream. Um, somebody beat one of my Dune 2 world records. Now, <laughs> I wouldn't call myself super competitive, but this will not stand. Um, the curious thing is the way in which it happened. So first thing I'm going to do is compare side by side. Uh, so this on the left is my run. On the right will be the run of the other guy. So Rattus128. Um, another fellow Aussie, apparently. Um, this is the first Dune 2 speedrun that he's posted. Uh, so he's just kind of appeared out of nowhere, which is, you know, I guess that's the way it happens. Like, I would have appeared out of nowhere at some point. So, um, first thing I'm going to do is watch both of them. They're at about, they're going to be within, within about a second of each other. So, a few things to notice. So this is this is mission two. So it's very very simple. Um, the strategy for the first half of Dune two speedrunning essentially is to rush the enemy base with the units you've got, um, capture a particular structure. Uh, that changes on the mission. In in this one, the key is to the way to win this mission is to harvest twenty seven hundred credits worth of spice. And the quickest way to do that is to rush the enemy base and take over the refinery when the enemy harvester has arrived. To capture a structure in Dune 2, you have to damage it into the red. So it's green for 50% and then uh, yellow for a little bit and then red right at the end. So what you'll see, well, him do first and then me because he actually rushed for... Uh, quicker, but I'll get to that. Um, what you'll see both of us doing is damaging the refinery down to the red area, then watching carefully for the enemy harvester to rock up, and then once the enemy harvester has driven into the refinery, at that point we capture it, and then um, from that point we will actually take on all the credits that the enemy harvester is you know, has come back with. So. Uh, keep an eye on the timer in the bottom right of my stream here. Because the interesting thing about the way this guy did it is, well, you'll see. A bit of a time difference in something fairly critical. He also messes around a little bit more with his harvesters, which I don't think is optimal. Okay, here we go. Right, starting the timer. So, his enemy harvester has already come back to base. Mine is lagging behind. And I will stop the timer when my harvester, my enemy's harvester, comes in to roost as well. Okay. So... This guy's speedrun has beaten my time by a whole 7 seconds. Formal world record is 407, his record is 4. Um, but he's done that partially by making the enemy harvester come home basically 16 seconds earlier. So. I don't know how that happened. I don't know why, if it's something to do with the way his game is configured, the way uh, he managed his units early on, the way I managed my units. So my plan tonight is to play around with Dune 2, try and understand exactly what happened there. Why is, you know, why was the enemy harvester 15, 16 seconds slower in my run? Something interesting that I have noticed. You can hear the audio from both videos, but his is slightly louder. And if you listen closely to the music, you can hear it sort of stutter a little bit. So his is just about to finish. 
So he's got... It, it's 401, but it, this came up just before it had, you know, just before the time actually flipped over. So this is a human error thing. He definitely did a 400. So 400, 407. That's the difference. Um, I have a few working theories to test out tonight to see if I can figure out exactly what went wrong with mine or what went better with his. Um, <clears throat> the first of which is to try DOSBox settings. So again, if we go back and just listen to some of the music, you can hear it stuttering, you can hear it glitching a little bit. It's also playing at a slightly more variable speed. So that I think he might be running his in a uh, at a lower CPU cycle rate in DOSBox, which means his his virtual DOS machine is running a little bit slower than mine. Now I do know that CPU speed can affect randomness in Dune 2. Um, for example, I think the Death's Hand missiles right at the end of the game becomes much much more accurate when you have a much slower machine just because it doesn't have enough time I suppose to do um, proper randomness so that's one possible thing I have a few different theories it could be DOSBox configuration um, it could be that Harvester just regular behavior and pathfinding is actually so different that it causes a 17 second difference I don't think that's the case I don't think I've noticed that while playing the game at any point but it's a possibility uh, it could be that he spends more time looking away from the enemy harvester. So enemy units, well, all units in Dune 2 move slower if they're not visible, with, I believe, or believed, the exception to be harvesters. So harvesters should move at the same speed no matter what. But maybe there's something different in their behavior when it is, you know, when you're not looking at them so much. Maybe they become slightly faster in harvesting or movement. I'll test that. Uh, it could be that enemy harvesters in particular move faster under the fog of war in Dune 2. Um, I did explore about a square extra distance into the enemy base compared to him. So maybe because I had the harvester, uh, the enemy harvester in view for longer, maybe that's a cause. Um, something I did was that I was continually clicking on Let me see if I can find it. Of course, I'll be further back. Dope. So you'll see me click rapidly on the um, enemy harvester. Well, okay, maybe it was a little bit earlier. Basically, clicking on it more often gives you the um, the text update quicker in the top of the screen. Uh, I wanted to do that to more finely uh, control, uh, or rather know... <sighs> Sorry, it's been a long day. To know when it was about to turn around. Uh, I'll pause. Something else different that he and I did. Uh, I repair the enemy refinery once I've captured it. He did not. Um, doing that actually makes refining happen quicker. So I'm a little surprised if he's, if he's watched my run and adapted his strategy from that, I'm very surprised that he didn't repair the refinery, but yeah, clearly he didn't need it to be my time. So whatever. Um, so yeah, those are, those are my theories. So tonight instead of just playing the game normally i'm going to do a bit of theory crafting i'm going to fire up the game i'm going to switch over to god that's confusing having so much on my screen at the moment so Let's get the intro when we get into this. So, a few things that we can do. I have a couple of save games 
sort of set up ready to test a few things. So let's jump into that. Uh, the first one, I'm going to race some harvesters. So this is a bit of a crazy save game. So this is from mission seven. Um, this was me testing out Reporting. what I'm calling the ghost tank um, strategy. So a weird thing that you'll see here Acknowledged. is as this siege tank drives through here, it is completely ignored by the rocket turrets and it's completely ignored by this siege tank. Reporting. This is a glitch that I found Affirmative. and which is crucial to speed running Reporting. mission six and beyond at this point. Maybe later on we'll get to that and I'll actually do a full explanation of that. The really interesting thing is that I've set this particular level up to do a few different harvester races. One is a very simple drive them as far as I can on consistent terrain and see if there's any difference at all in the speed. And the other thing I'm going to do is a slightly less scientific Reporting. harvesting race. So he's going to harvest, this guy's going to harvest, I'm going to focus on one and not the other and see which, if there's like a massive difference in um, their harvesting times. So, to start off with, reporting. Acknowledge. Reporting. Acknowledge. I've already screwed that up. <laughs> so, I'm going to move, I'm going to wait until he is alongside. Acknowledged. Okay, cool, I have two harvesters moving at exactly the same rate. I'm now going to focus on this one only. And it looks... It looks like there is no difference at all. None at all, okay. Scratch that theory. Harvesters do not change their speed if they're not being looked at. I was right about that. So, next thing to do is the harvesting race. So I'm gonna do the same sort of thing. I'm gonna move this guy a little bit further away. And I'm gonna carefully watch on the radar. Affirmative. Reporting. Affirmative. Okay. So this is just a simple comparison of which harvester finishes first. They should finish at basically the same time. Uh, we have enough ornithopters that they should both be picked up. Or whichever one finishes first will get picked up. And the difference will be if we see this dot disappear long before this one does. So I'm not going to click on him yet. I'm just going to let this, let this run. Um, I might have to do this a couple more times. One with the harvester not selected to see if this update makes any difference at all. And again, just, just with one harvester timing it to see if it fills up faster or not if I'm continually clicking on it. We'll see. So we're halfway done so far. So the way that the harvesters move around is going to be a bit random. Uh, it's not going to be exactly the same, but it's going to average it out to about the same. So I'm not too bothered by the fact that they're in different spice patches. 80%. Is it 100? Reporting. Is it 89? That is not a result I expected. So the one we were looking at finished significantly faster, or rather, you know, 10% faster. So... I'm 
I gotta run that experiment again. Affirmative. Doesn't matter that he's picked up one percent. That's that's totally fine. Reporting. Okay, this guy to go back now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This should be enough spice left to get him to one hundred percent. The difference here is that there's no deep spice pits, so their movement should be even more similar now. Reporting. While he's doing that, I need to document these results. So what? Harvesters move exactly speed if visible or not to Okay, so they're both at about the same fill, fill them out. So, I guess we repeat the same thing. So I'm going to tell him to harvest where he is. This guy to harvest where he is. It's just the same test again. Um, we'll see if this guy hits 100 when this guy down here is at 90 still. I don't think that's going to be the case. Or at the very least, I would have expected it not to be. So, this is the kind of crazy crap that speedrunners have to do. This is what we do to learn the games that we, uh, that we play. Not that I'm the most... Um... You know, experienced or prolific speedrunner. This is this is my game. This and Macquarie One. But you know, I feel like I've had enough of a uh, I've got enough of a feel of the game to talk about that. So two fifty sixty percent. Ah. Basically, you're going to click down here the moment he snaps off harvesting. Reporting. He's at eighty percent. Reporting. Reporting. Harvesters seem to harvest quicker when you're looking at them. Right, of course, I have two, two refineries. Okay. It's interesting. So harvesting happens quicker when you're looking at the harvester. By like 20% or so. Okay, let's quantify this. Reporting. So it might be a difference in the spice fields uh, contributing to some of that. So it was 10% the first test, 20% the second. Let's get the. Let's get at least the the deep bits out of the way. Reporting affirmative. Reporting. Because the way this works, if there's like a dip in the sand or like a hill, and reporting. That's part of the the, the same spice patch that harvest is working at. It'll go to those areas first, even though it's not actually. Oh gosh, maybe that is the difference. 
Maybe there is more spice in those areas. I wouldn't have thought so. Okay, we'll pause him. Reporting. We'll wait for this guy to finish off these big bits. And then we'll do the same test again, but I will actually time. I'll hit start on the timer when the first guy finishes. And then stop when I see the second one finish. We'll get like a second figure with this. Acknowledge. So he's done all that. Carry on. Reporting. Acknowledged. Affirmative. Let's get this guy roughly the middle of his spice patch. Now we'll do the same for this guy. We'll put him right here. To sort of minimize I guess distances to a full thing. So I think they, they consume about seven squares-ish. There's a variable amount of spice per, per square. I think. So, tell him to harvest. Tell him to harvest. That little pause will have given the first guy uh, down below, will have given him the head start. We'll see how this goes. So I don't think this, if this is an actual discovery, I don't think it's going to stop or change speedrunning this game very much. Um, the reason for that is that it doesn't really matter if harvesters harvest quicker when they're visible, because most of the time you, you don't really have the freedom to control what you're looking at when you're speedrunning. It has to be, you know, we're focusing on buildings, now we're focusing on the enemy base, now we're focusing on managing our own units. There isn't a lot of time, really, to focus on harvesters and nothing else. Um, the actions per minute that you have to do in a speedrun just takes that away. You don't have the time to go and look at your harvesters for... Certainly not for an amount of time that would make a difference, I think. So when this guy finishes, and I guess we can run the same test again the other way around, so we'll focus on the South Harvester. They finished at about the same time. Maybe the deeper spice patches were the issue. Great, he's hung there. Report acknowledged. Um, okay. Can we do the same thing again? Gotta harvest the deep patches. Acknowledged. I may have been talking nonsense. It may be that given equal spice patches, harvesters will finish at the same rate. That would make more sense Reporting. than whatever the hell I thought I was on to a moment ago. Acknowledged. Affirmative. 
and we'll move this guy here just so that he doesn't get caught up on the edge of the map with the carrier like that last time. So this guy gets dropped off first. Reporting. Acknowledged. So, we'll reverse the test, um, we'll start this guy first, Reporting. then we'll start the bottom guy, and we'll look at the bottom one. So, tell him to harvest where he is, tell him to harvest. So, this test, I expect to see them both finish at about the same time, because we've now removed the variables. Um, those variables being the shape of the spice field and the depth, the richness of it. That doesn't matter for the speed run that I'm thinking of for mission two, because that's that's not controllable. It doesn't matter. The, the enemy harvester is always going to be in the same spice field at the same area. I don't know for sure if its its route is randomized. We'll get to that. But again, it doesn't matter that much because it's completely uncontrollable. Give him time to finish. So the moment it snaps off and stops spitting uh, sand out of the back, I'll click up here and see where this one's up to. The one above is doing a lot more movement. That might be contributing to it. He's gone down to the south of the spice field and he's moving around a little bit more. Reporting. 82. I think to properly empirically test this, we would need a custom map with identical spice, identical harvester positioning, all that sort of stuff. So we're not going to be able to do that. I don't have like a map editor for this game. Just for fun, I'm going to time how long it takes one harvester to go from 80% to 100%. If that's 16 seconds, then maybe that's a bit of a clue. Hey, Euler, how's things? Thanks for the raid. Um, greetings, everyone. I'm Tim. I am wasting my life uh, with June 2. So what I'll do is I'm going to click, I'm going to stop the timer, st yeah, I start the timer when this guy hits 80% and it's going to be a bit awkward because he's going to move around. Okay, timer started. Excellent, everyone's familiar with what I'm doing then. That is 16 seconds. Why is it? Why is that 16 seconds? Uh, 
Okay, this test is completely inconclusive. Um, so, for reference, what I'm doing is basically I hold or held a world record for Mission 2 in Dune 2 um, with a time of 4 minutes and 7 seconds. Somebody came along and beat that time by 7 seconds, got a 4 minutes flat. I am trying to figure out how that happened because the main difference is long story short to finish that mission to speedrun it you have to capture the enemy refinery the moment their harvester walks into it to steal their spice and the timing of that harvester coming back is crucial somehow that was 16 seconds earlier in this other guy's run I don't understand why so tonight is just screwing around the game trying different things trying to figure out why that difference was um, keyboard, yeah, it's Logitech uh, G915 10 keyless. I love it. I really do. Uh, it was expensive, but worth it. I don't think he cheated. No. Um, I couldn't, I can't even think of how you would cheat this. It'll be something different in the way that the game behaves, either because because of the way that he was playing or because of the way his DOS box is set up. Those are the two theories I'm working on. I'm not not expecting to figure out in any way that he cheated. Send game speed rules. I'm not super familiar with uh, CNC, but basically, Reporting. each individual unit does have a certain speed. Um, and it actually varies a little bit based on terrain. Um, the really key thing though in this game is that some units actually move slower. They update slower in the um, in the game engine if they're not being looked at. So to give you an idea of how that works, I'm going to tell Reporting. both of these tanks Reporting. Reporting. to just drive north. Permanent reporting. Acknowledged. So they're moving at about the same rate. But if I move the camera, so we're only looking at this one. This guy was updating slower because he was off screen. And that is actually a absolutely valid strategy. This is how you speedrun Dune 2. Um, you try and focus the camera on your units more, enemy units less. means your it, it handicaps the enemy units because they move slower, they fire slower. It's stupid, but that was how you got a massive complex strategy game to run on a 486 back in 1992. Fastest game speed versus second fastest. So there are some differences. Um, there are five settings for game speed in Dune 2. The only real difference that I'm actually aware of is the range of Sonic tanks. So let's actually see if this if this is visible. So it goes into about here. Reporting. Acknowledged. I'll move this other tank over. So Sonic tanks can't damage each other, so this is. This is just a marker to see where that shot ends up. So this is on the fastest game speed. If we now change it to the slowest... Yeah, you can see it only goes to about there. Right, okay. So... This game's a bit weird in that respect. Um, if you run DOSBox really, really slowly, um, like I run it at... Let's switch over to the other... 
out of you. So you can see I actually run this game in DOSBox at 12,000 cycles. If you run it slower, um, beyond a certain point, it will start to slow the game down. But above a certain point, um, I don't think it actually, it doesn't affect how, how fast things move. So actually, demonstrate this. Let's just pump up the cycles a fair bit. Acknowledged. He's moving at the same Reporting. speed as he was. The only thing that it really changes, as far as I'm aware, is this scrolling speed. So that's just auto scrolling, but if I click, that goes much faster, whereas if I drop speed back to about where it was, that's now a more sensible speed. So, to speedrun Dune 2, Enemy structure destroyed. cool, you do you, um, Reporting. Acknowledged. sorry, what, what am I saying? Affirmative. Yeah, so above a certain CPU cycle setting, the only thing that changes in Dune 2 is how fast you scroll, and that is basically a preference thing. Let's... No, let's not burn any houses down. Let's not do that. I don't think you can put together a a really effective, you know, pitchforks and torches mob um, under social distancing, distancing rules, so... I don't think we can do it, I'm sorry. So, the next test that I wanted to do... This is going to be dull. Reporting. Acknowledged. I'm going to straight up time. Affirmative. I'm going to restart that because I messed up the timer. <laughs> Reporting. Acknowledged. Three, two, one, go. Acknowledged. So, I'm going to time how long this guy takes to uh, get to 100% full. While I'm doing that, could you guys just keep an eye out, see if you can spot if there's any major difference in movement. So I'm going to rerun this test a few times. Keep an eye on the movement pattern, where he actually goes, because um, that might be a factor as well. But if it's if it's deterministic, he should just go to separate, you know, the same route every time. Yeah, here in here in Australia, we're still wearing masks. We're still meant to be social distancing. It doesn't happen quite as much as it should. Uh, if the route is different, then that simply means that um, it's an uncontrolled variable in the test, and it fuzzes the numbers slightly. So what I'm watching for is this pile of sand that's just pouring out the back of the harvester. The moment that disappears, he's either completely full and about to be picked up and taken to the refinery, or he's about to move on to a different spot. Let's see. Okay. So, that's a minute 38. Now, Reporting. I moved into that Reporting. square and started. So, reset timer. Let's go. 
So the first part of his route is going to look very similar because in Dune 2 there's... In the same way as in Red Alert, where there's patches of ore and then patches of gems, where the gems are worth more, the other bits of spice, the, the hills and the dips, they have more spice in them, and harvesters will uh, prioritize going to those spots first. And I've actually completely forgotten the test that I was actually going to do, so this at the moment is just a test of the route. It looks like it's going to be the same route. Which means harvester pathing is deterministic. And harvesters don't care about other units. They do not react to being fired on. They don't run away. They don't act aggressively. They don't change their behavior. Um, unless something crosses into their path when they've already set a, a path movement. So this is interesting, actually. This is worth doing. That is the same path. That was a minute 29. The first test was a minute 38. Am I going crazy or did that actually happen? Back in a second. No, I'm turning the light on, closing the windows. Um... That makes no sense. Reporting. Acknowledged. Affirmative. Oh god, if, if if live split is unreliable, everything I'm doing tonight is just nonsense. That'd be great. Imagine filing a bug to the live split guys and saying, hey, this timer is unreliable. Um, that. Why is he at 95% there? What? Yeah, that was 125. No, that was actually shorter. Four seconds shorter. So we've had a 138, a 129, and a 125. I know the amount of spice in each square is different. Is it, is it randomly generated when you first start harvesting from a particular square? That 
can't be what they've done. I think each patch is a, is a random amount. Let's try this one more time. Reporting. Acknowledged. Affirmative. See, this is this is the crazy thing about this. Um the harvester's path is deterministic. It is absolutely going in the same direction every single time. It's choosing the, the absolute same path every time. Um, and nothing that's done in the speed run affects the route of the enemy harvester. Like, you don't even see it until it's marching towards the base. And this is the same save game loaded over and over and over. Yeah, there absolutely is, but if... But the problem is, if it's... Why is it random between runs in the same save game? Surely the, um... I would have thought the value for the spice for each square would have been set at the time the map was generated. This is... This is suggesting something different. Okay, this is going to be a slower harvest run. Eighty-three. Crap. Crap, I, I hit it early. But still, that's like a bit, a, a minute forty-five ish. Yeah. No, the spice doesn't regrow. It's not like... It's not like Tiberium. It's not like Aura and Amite in Red Alert. Um, on a map, they place a certain number of what are called spice blooms, which if you shoot them or run a unit into them, you get a massive explosion of spice. Uh, it's kind of a limited amount of spice. In theory it is, but... Actually, this is a really good test. Reporting. Affirmative. Reporting. Affirmative. Give these guys a view so they actually go up here faster. Um... Someone asked the question earlier about whether shots Reporting. damage spice. Reporting. Most... I think explosions do, but not actual shots. Anyway, the point of getting here... So this harvester is 100% full, even though it's an enemy harvester I can still see that. But what you'll notice when it goes up... Report. Acknowledge. More spice appears around it. And you get this butthole in this place. Um, the curious thing about that, though, if a harvester is 100% full, it actually... Oh, don't harvest the butthole. I'm so sorry you guys had to see this. Um, if you blow up a harvester that's 100% full, it actually produces more spice than was in the harvester. So, in theory, and I'm trying to keep a straight face here. In theory, if you let a harvester harvest all the way, you know, all the way up, then blow it up, then come back harvest more until it's full again, then blow it up again, you will actually grow the spice. That's just a, a maths mistake that they made um, creating the game. So, in theory, if you had all the time in the world, you could refill an entire map with spice. Except for hilly bits. Um, spice 
Harvester explosions do not refill spice and healy bits, only on flat bits. And obviously if it's near rock it just gets completely lost. So just for fun actually. Reporting. Let's Let's let this guy fill up. Reporting. Affirmative. Reporting. Affirmative. Reporting. We'll check out this one thing. I want to see before we go into better testing. Let's get this guy basically 99% full. We're moving him up here, we'll blow him up just to see what happens. Yeah, hi boss. Sorry, I can't come into work today. I've got spice butt hole. Yep. Yep. Thank you for your, your thoughts. Bye. Be enough. Affirmative. So, I did not expect harvester pathing to be deterministic, but then harvest times to vary so much. Reporting. Acknowledge. Report. Acknowledge. Reporting. I don't know what to make of that. There you go. So that created way more squares of spice than um than it actually harvested. So we got results from about a minute twenty-five to a minute thirty-eight, minute forty-five. So about a twenty seconds. A 20 second variable harvesting time there which would absolutely encompass that um that 16 second time difference all right no worries mate thanks for coming along thanks for the raid um that's really fun otherwise i'd just be talking to myself like this for for two hours or whatever um and thanks as well for everyone who came along with with Euler and is sticking around. I, I didn't expect this to have uh, to create any interest at all, but uh, there you go. So, Reporting. what we're going to do this time? So this is I've actually I've just loaded a, a save that I've got permission to. I am not going to do a, an actual speed run for a bit. I was expecting to once I figured out what was going on, but I think it's going to take a while longer. Affirmative. What I'm doing here is just a quick scouting run. Acknowledge. Going to check out the enemy base. I'm going to find their harvester. Reporting. Affirmative. Reporting. Affirmative. Reporting. Affirmative. Affirmative. Acknowledge. Is he not in that field to start with? Acknowledge. He's always in this field. This spice field. Acknowledge. Reporting. Acknowledge. Report. Affirmative. Affirmative. Where is the enemy harvester? There he is. Right, so he must finish. There must be a spice patch down here that he starts off in. So the water is down into this patch, and then this is... In the actual run, I've got units coming down here, we're attacking the refinery. 
damaging it to the point where it can be captured. And then the moment he hits 100%, he drives into the refinery. Once it's red and he's in there, we can capture it, and then that gives us the spice that we need quickly to, to finish the level. What I want to test here... Our base is under attack. Okay, so they're always going to come up here and uh, attack. That's fine, we can ignore that. We're just testing. So my question is... What are the differences in time for this harvester? Maybe it is just a natural random difference. Maybe it's... Yeah, maybe it's theory one. Maybe it's the harvester behavior is actually so random that it can cause a 20 second difference on its own. Um, that would be terrible because if I'm completely reliant on absolute randomness, then really it's an absolute crapshoot. So. Start the timer. Reporting. All we want to do is just discover the spice field so we could watch the harvester come along. Warning, order unit approaching. Okay. Affirmative, affirmative. So enemy unit placement shouldn't matter too much because once they stop chasing my unit, they go straight back to where they were. So he's run away. So what's happened there is that my trike has run into a spice bloom and the bloom has exploded and added spice around the map. I didn't know there was one. I've never been to this corner of this map. I've never needed to. So the enemy harvester should arrive shortly. It's around the two minute mark in the run, so hello, here we go. Don't know why it takes that winding path. Oh, I do. So pathfinding in Dune 2 is very, very simple. So this, the old spice field is over here, the new one's over here. It's drawn a line to um, a straight line to the nearest next bit of spice, and it's just driven around the buildings to do that. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that continually clicking does not change the time. Okay, so that's a 2 minute 13. Let's do this over again. So, organic ferret, so a 20 second, 20 second range of time difference, what, what causes that? I've just not timed that very well. Reporting. Affirmative. Warning. Order unit approaching. Okay, there should be enough of it. Affirmative. Reporting. Affirmative. Okay. There is another bit of randomness that I would like to test uh, in this, which is it takes a few seconds after you've actually completed 
you know, all the objectives in Dune 2 before the mission says that it's finished. Um, oh, look, here's the spice bloom. So that's what it looks like. And then what you're meant to do is shoot it. So the mission end timer, so once you, uh, for mission two, for example, your goal is to get 2,700 credits. Um, which is why capturing the enemy refinery is so key. But the point is, once you've hit that magic number, 2,700, um, there is a delay after that before it actually says, yep, okay, you finished your mission. Um, I did some testing on mission one and only a couple of runs with that and it looked absolutely identical like it, it was I'll demonstrate that in a moment actually um, so that time it looked identical but I have seen some difference in some recorded speedruns which I think means that the way that I was testing it isn't actually uh, correct if that makes sense so that'll be maybe that'll be the next test that we do I'll do a couple more runs of this Please don't drive into darkness, I need to see what happens. That'd be annoying if I didn't scout enough. Okay, good. That's a 228. That's a 15 second difference right there. That's it, it's just random because... The, the, okay, the time is different between my run and the other guys. Entirely because... It's a variable amount of time that the harvester takes, even though the, the path is completely deterministic. It's variable in the amount of... Spice it picks up per square. Doesn't matter for any other mission but this one, because this is the only mission that actually relies on um, a credit cap. And it doesn't matter for later missions, because even though you can, you know, it can, it is going to affect every, every level that you play, it's not controllable, and it's going to average out in the end. So it's only this mission that it's key for. That's terrifying. Okay. I will probably at some later point, I'll do a few more rounds of that exact test just to see what the range is so that I can start to figure out, okay, if I can see the harvester finishes at around 2.13, that means it's going to be an absolute perfectly optimized run and I can go with it. Um, and it's good that that happens in the second mission of the game. There are nine missions in the game. Good that it happens in the second because if you're trying to do like a massive, you know, whole game run, you know, that's a good 15 seconds just free time. So. Let's move on. Let's go back to the first mission and just see a couple of things there. So, let's see if it happens. No, I have to restart the game to demonstrate this. So, there is a very silly and very simple speedrun strat for the first mission of Dune 2. It's the same no matter which campaign you go to. Where is? There it is. Let's go to the wider view. This is slightly easier to see. 
so you guys want to see a world record? Just straight up. House Atreides. So, three, two, one, go. Restart scenario. And now we sit back and wait. So, what's going on here? Um, this is mission one. The objective is to get, you know, you got to build up a wind trap, you got to build a refinery, you got to get up to a thousand credits. We're at a thousand credits, but what happens if you start the game is that the number of credits that you have dips down to 999. Uh, but that is not set to go off at the start of a mission. That is simply on a timer um, that runs throughout the game running. So, if you start the first mission, credits drops from 1,000 to 999. You then immediately restart the um, scenario. Uh, that drop doesn't happen. So what the game actually does... Enemy unit approaching from the south. You sit there and wait. Our base is under attack. Report affirmative. Acknowledge. Report acknowledge. For about two minutes. Report affirmative. It sits there waiting. Report affirmative. 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 And then it starts to check if you have met the winning condition, which you have. So. What we'll see, it'll be a little bit over, it'll be about 215, 217 thereabouts. Just waiting, come on. Your mission is complete. There it is. <laughs> Having done nothing at all in the first mission. <sighs> so. What can we do now? What would be useful is to do some testing of um, the mission time of finishing. So, let's use mission one for that. Oh, and if you're familiar with CNC, this will look very familiar as well. This is where they started doing the whole, you know, here is the here is the map, you click on bits to move to. I think this started in June 2. I know CNC did it, I know Red Alert did it with a map of Europe and, and all that sort of thing. Um, I know Warcraft did it. June 2 might have been the first, but not 100%. Oh, and this is the copy protection for June 2. Um... And like a lot of copy protection, it's just stuff out of the manual, out of the paper manual. The idea being, if you copy the discs, it's not enough information to run the game. This comes up at the end of the first mission and after the end of the seventh, so the second, the third last mission. Um, and it's entirely randomized and it's entirely just stuff out of the manual, which I happen to have here because I have a couple of copies of this game. So... You need to go to structures, uh, palace, here we go, armor level is heavy. And that's that. Uh, it gives you three tries. If you get it wrong three goes, it, it picks different ones. If you get it wrong three goes in a row, it just quits the game. Which is kind of awful of it to do. 
if you didn't save right at the end of the mission. Um, yeah, we'll use we we'll use mission one for this testing. House Atreides. Yeah, with the copy protection, it gets to the point where if you've it's one of those games where if you've played the game enough, you know most of the answers anyway. So a lot of the time, it's quite it's quite doable to play the game by just Report you know guessing. Report acknowledged. Construction complete. There are also a lot of crash copies of the game out there that just simply bypass that. Um, this is not one of them. Construction complete. Acknowledged. Reporting. Interestingly enough, it is actually valid to speedrun this game with a crack copy because it's just been determined that it makes no difference practically. Report acknowledged. Um, Construction complete. You're absolutely allowed to play the game and Report. you know. Um, slow down your speedrun by having to type in the stuff, but... So, what I'm doing here is I'm playing the first mission as you are meant to. You don't really have to build the concrete slabs, I just like to because it's neat. We'll just place the concrete slab over the dead soldier, it's fine. Construction complete. Construction complete. Now we need six of those. Reporting. Acknowledged. And so to speed up playing, I'm using keyboard shortcuts, so it's B to repeat the last thing that was built, it's P to place it. Construction complete. What's the shortcut to go in there, though? It's one of the F keys, I think. No, that's meant at. F3, okay. So F3 goes in the back. Reporting. And then unit movements are sort of M to move, A to attack. So the reason I'm making sure this uh, attacking units are sort of directly up and down is because units actually do more damage when they're firing straight up and down and some diagonals. I think it's straight up and down, the diagonals, and then from either the top or the bottom it's like an extra, um, like sort of a knight's move kind of thing. Basically you do somewhere between double and triple the amount of damage just by placing your units uh, differently relative to the enemies. See look, watch, watch how slowly this goes down because he's firing sideways. And then if I move him vertically, dead straight away. Keyboard shortcuts for Command and Conquer. Affirmative. Acknowledged. Reporting. Affirmative. Acknowledged. Report. Acknowledged. Enemy unit destroyed. Something I've actually considered doing for speedrunning Dune 2 is building my own little, uh, my own little uh, keyboard of like you know a row of like you know eight or ten keys or something. So that I have a dedicated A key, then a move key, then all that. Because handling this is, you know, there's a lot of keys here. Um, and it's not so much an issue with remembering which, uh, all the shortcut keys. It's more about being able to reach them all easily. Because it really sucks to screw up your timing and, and everything by going for the A key, but then hitting S. Which is actually stop. Well, it is for harvesters anyway. Reporting. Reporting. Acknowledged. 
So, Harvester's going to trundle back. Uh, a full Harvester holds 700 credits, so we're going to end up with about 955 credits here. What I'm going to do to test, or to run this test, is let the Harvester fill... Not very much, just enough to get the last... So yeah, so we only need another 45 credits to win the mission. So... What I'm going to do... I'm just going to let it get to, you know... Well, that's going to be enough. Because 1% of... No, I'm not even going to try and do the maths. Let's just see if this works. So, can you tell him to return? Atreides Harvester, your mission is complete. So it's about five seconds. I correctly. So 4.71, that is a data point. Basically, the reason I'm looking at this is because I'm fairly sure that I've seen it change um, by a few seconds. What is the trike speed of a saboteur unit? What, what is that even asking? Oh, all the special units are at the ends. Okay, that does in fact say speed. I don't know if that's visible. Sorry. 95 kilometers an hour, and then in brackets, trike. So. If you're familiar at all with Super Mario speedrunning, you'll know the concept of frame rules. And that's kind of what I'm testing here. So, in Mario, a level can only we uh, can only end every 35 frames. So, it's close, the effect of that is close to randomizing the time that it takes for the level to finish. What it actually means, especially if when considering that game's been speedrun and ground down to its, you know, it's very much its core parts, um, it means that when speedrunning that game, it doesn't matter if you save one or two frames, because if you're right at the start of a frame rule, in terms of where your, your speedrun strategy has got you, it doesn't matter if you save five, ten frames, because it's going to have to wait till the end of the frame rule before it actually finishes anyway. So, my theory is maybe Dune 2 does something slightly similar to that. Your mission is complete. That was two seconds. So we're going from a 4.7 to 2.01. It might actually be quicker to just quit the game and start again, save the uh, copy protection nonsense. So this is annoying because this is another thing that's um, another completely random thing that affects the end time. So I'm basically waiting essentially a random uh, time 
to get myself to essentially a random place in what I think is the Dune 2 frame rule. Uh, I'm going to restart the timer, going to hit R so he goes back in. Start the timer at 1000 credits. Your mission is complete. That was quick as well. Now the rate of credits going up actually changes because we hit the max limit. So a refinery can only carry a thousand credits or a thousand and five for some reason. So maybe to increase the accuracy of this test, we have to build a second refinery. So maybe that's what we'll do. So maybe we'll get some more spice in this guy. We'll just build another refinery. Doesn't need concrete. Reporting. Acknowledged. Reporting. Affirmative. We don't even really need the extra harvester. Um, <laughs> we just need the spice storage. And because it's the first mission, we can't build uh, silos. So another carryover from um, this game into Command and Conquer is the idea of silos. Harvester deployed. Simply because the currency used in game is a physical medium, which is you have to go out and collect it. That's the basic tenet of any um, real time strategy. Reporting. And the idea that you needed to store it and build structures to store it started with Dune 2. You're right, I did change how I how I conduct the tests. Reporting. Affirmative reporting. So we'll see. And that won't make a difference for a full game speedrun, but it does matter for ILs. Affirmative. Shit. You might be right. Let's give it a go. Oh, there's also this super charming, fun little bug where if you drive a a unit into a structure while you've got the uh, unit selected, it gives you this weird little thing here. Your mission is complete. That's another two two thirty six. That's been the same three times over now. So I bet. I think you're on a link here, Ferret. Um, so. What type of structure is this? That's a rocket turret. But what it's actually asking is, you know, defensive, defensive emplacement or something. Here we go, ground-based turret. So, this is without hard resetting the game. Mission is complete.
So much for that theory. So it's a two second delay having restarted the game, and I just got another two second delay having not restarted. But it's been consistently two second, two second, two second, two second. Except for that first test that I did that was five. And it's been five for uh, the mission twos. What's different? Is it starting a new campaign? Starting to regret deciding to do it this way. I did for the first test. No, I was doing it over and over. Yeah, I was I was restarting it. Uh, what am I doing? Armor level of the trike. It's going to be light, isn't it? Light. So for every test that I've done so far, except for that first one, all the two second ones were finishing the mission, going into the next mission, loading my save. So if I pick another house and start the game again essentially from scratch... House Atreides. Because when I was closing the game, I was still reloading my save. So, what I'm expecting to happen here is I'm going to build a wind trap, I'm going to build two refineries. Construction complete. I'm going to start the timer the moment we hit a thousand credits through, you know, the harvest that's coming back and so on. I am expecting this to be five. Reporting. Affirmative. Acknowledged. Or four or five seconds. Warning. Enemy unit approaching from the west. Maybe the game gives you two seconds. Um. Enemy unit destroyed. Two second mission ends. Reporting. Acknowledged. A trading harvester deployed. If you just loaded a save, maybe that's it. Reporting. Affirmative. Acknowledged. Enemy unit destroyed. Reporting. Enemy unit destroyed. Reporting. Affirmative. Reporting. Affirmative. Affirmative. Acknowledged. Affirmative. Reporting. Reporting. Acknowledged. Affirmative. Reporting. Enemy unit destroyed. Yes, sir. Reporting. Construction complete. Reporting. Acknowledged. Atreides Harvester deployed. Reporting. Affirmative. Reporting. Affirmative. Acknowledged. Reporting. Re Affirmative. So this this test will be slightly different as well because I've because I didn't place the concrete down, these structures are starting at half health. And that means that they will refine spice slower. Report acknowledged. 
but it's not a huge difference. Reporting. Acknowledged. Reporting. Affirmative. So, okay, so tonight we've established that harvester pathing is deterministic, but the amount of spice that they harvest is essentially random somehow. Um, which makes no sense to me. But that does mean that that time is essentially random and it's about a 15, 15 20 second time difference. In terms of speedrunning strats, that is that is going to be entirely confined to mission 2. It won't matter for any other mission. It doesn't matter for mission 1 because you don't actually harvest spice in a speedrun. It doesn't matter for any other mission because you're going to end up building... You know, you can't win with spice. You have to build up your army and destroy the enemy from mission 3 onwards. And you're going to have so much spice going on that it's... It's going to average out over time. So, two harvesters, we're going to hit a thousand. Your mission is complete. That's it! If you save and load the game, you get two second mission ends. If you start from scratch, you get a five second end. That's a 5.03. That was a saving two loads. Yeah, so if I go back and reload the save that I've got that mission, and do that again, it'll be a two second. Medium or heavy? Medium. Yep. That one I knew. Yeah, I bet we go reload this again. This will be two seconds. Your mission is complete. Or three. Definitely not five. Let's try that theory again. I'm restarting the game from scratch. I'm just going to load my save from the main menu again. Mission is complete. That was a four. So it's about five seconds. If I'm starting a new campaign from scratch, it seems to be two seconds if I'm saving and reloading within the game. I might be getting four seconds if I start by loading the save from the main menu. Let's do one more test with the save from the main menu.
So this should be a four. Your mission is complete. That's it. So. It makes no logical sense. But. If you start a new game. The first mission takes 5 seconds. To complete once you've hit the end objective. If you load a game of mission one from the main menu and then complete that, you get a four second timer. But then if you just save and reload, when you've already played the game a bit, you get two seconds. So this doesn't mean a lot of time overall, for example, in a full mission, if, you, if you're playing the full game start to end, there's 9 missions, you're talking a 3 second difference, that's about 27 seconds maximum uh, that it'll make a difference across the entire game, which is not much when the world record is just under 2 hours. But it means an absolute ton in terms of ILs, especially for Mission 2. Armament of the Devastator tank is dual 190mm guns. So this should be a 2. Your mission is complete. Three. Two point eight nine. Okay, so some of the differences I think I'm seeing in the results in this test are down to human error and accuracy. I'm starting and stopping my timer using my stream deck. Which, as you can see there, it's it's not a great keyboard. Um, the buttons are very squidgy, they're very imprecise. I've got at least a two-tenth sort of variation on the buttons. So it could be about half a second just based on human error, I think. So a time of three and a half could be three or it could be four. But that doesn't account for a difference between 2 seconds and 5 seconds. It does still matter a little bit. It does make an impact a little bit on the full game run because if you can save 27 seconds who isn't going to do that and saving and reloading is allowed um, restarting the game is allowed in a single session um, the first 
I don't want to say serious, but the first serious speedrun that I did of this game, it took me just over four hours. And I had to stop, I had to save the game, close it, and restart it because I got some really weird delay bug um, that I'd never actually seen before. But I was allowed to do that and it counted as a run because I'd recorded it from start to finish. It was still the same game, it was still the same session. So, it would be worth saving and reloading even in a full game speed run in like mission one because if that would save you 27 seconds that's worth it the question is does that time carry on So, for example, if I start a new campaign and then in the first mission immediately save and reload, does that then give me the two second time rather than five second? And then does that two second time then carry on through the rest of the, the, the rest of the uh, missions? Let's see. I'm going to start the game from scratch. House Atreides. I'm going to do mission one. So if I reload this now, restart the scenario because we have to do this to speedrun mission one. Ah, this makes no sense. No, it does. I'm not going to get a mission end timer for a result for mission one, but I will for mission two. And whether it's five seconds or two or three, that will be key to finding out. So, I'm going to finish, let this uh, mission one finish, and then we'll go into mission two and solve it with spice. Finish it with spice, rather. Reporting. Acknowledged. Acknowledged. Affirmative. So, yeah, so the world record for this game, in I think all three campaigns, is uh, a little bit under two hours. And for all three campaigns, it's held by the same Polish guy. Enemy unit destroyed. Report acknowledged. Whose username I think is Kishishek? Report acknowledged. It's been a while since I've checked the pronunciation of that. Acknowledged. Re acknowledged. Acknowledged. Report acknowledged. Enemy unit destroyed. Is the runtime based on in game time? Um. No. In-game time is... I want to say it's a strange beast. It's not a very strange beast, but it is not consistent. Uh, you do get a time for each individual mission, so I'll show you at the end screen of this one. You do get a time, but it is only in minutes, and it seems a bit slower than real time. I think possibly because it doesn't count time that you spend in this uh, this interface for any building, I think. I could be wrong. Reporting. Reporting. Your mission is complete. Right, so. Yeah, so up, up here it says three minutes. Um, but the actual time to finish that mission is closer to two. So, what does that actually tell you? Right. Quad. It's the Raider Troik. Not that specials. So we go back. 
speed 59 kilometers an hour It's not worth it overall. It's not a very. Reporting. It's not a very optimized run yet. Yes, sir. Moving it, a Dune reporting. 2 speedrunning is nowhere near as optimized as it is reporting. in some other games. Acknowledged. Construction complete. Um. Reporting. Like the main glitch that's used. Construction I say the main glitch that's used now. It's not really. The official glitch of the game or anything. Um, the ghost tank thing. That's not been optimized in the world record run. Um, it is fairly optimized in the Mission 7 speed run, which I could say because I actually hold the record currently for Atreides Mission 7 because I used um, the Ghost Tank glitch. Um, Kashishek does use it as well, but he didn't, at the time that he ran the run, he didn't. Um, no one had really sat down and like this and gone through that glitch to figure out how it worked. So while it is used a little bit, it's not really used Reporting. Reporting. with any real accuracy or understanding. Report. Acknowledge. Acknowledge. Which is not at all a slight against him, it's simply a, a thing that was not fully researched at the time. Reporting. Affirmative. Um, and if you sit down and watch that run, it actually looks like he's just like, yeah, let's let's give this a go. We'll see if this works, kind of thing. Construction complete. Uh, and it mostly does because it's not actually that difficult to do. It's just a case of it's a little bit awkward to know exactly what to do, exactly how it works, etc., etc. Construction complete. Um, in terms of whether it's worth saving the time, uh, like I just said, it's not really for. A whole game speedrun, but when you're talking about individual level runs, um, Reporting. this guy beat my record by seven seconds, and I think he got a. From memory, when I looked at the two runs side by side, he got a end game that was about a second faster than me, or maybe it was a second slower thereabouts. So we're only talking a few seconds either way. So, Reporting. Affirmative. it is kind of important complete. for an IL time, anyway. Construction complete. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm just playing this essentially casually, I'm just going to build two refineries and then probably a spice silo. Construction complete. Reporting. Ignore. Report. Affirmative. Report. Affirmative. I'll start arranging my units down here, so that they can fend off the inevitable Attack. Construction complete. Report. Ignore. Reporting. You'd cry. What about? Reporting. Ignore. Reporting. Affirmative. Reporting. Ignore. Reporting. Affirmative. Acknowledge. Acknowledge. Report. Acknowledge. Construction complete. Spice bloom located. <laughs> well, there it goes. Complete. Atreides harvester deployed. Construction complete. Construction complete. Yeah, it. Construction complete. I mean, that's speedrunning, right? In really heavily optimized games, you can lose you can lose the record by thousands. Or hundreds. And that's just the name of the game. Acknowledge. Report. Affirmative. Reporting. Acknowledge. Yes, sir. Moving up. Yes, sir. Move. Yes, sir. Moving up. Reporting. Construction complete. A harvester. So here's the spice silo. This is why the Tiberium silo in Command and Conquer looks the way that it does. This was the inspiration for it. 
reporting. I think. Reporting. I like to pretend I'm a video game historian. Um. But it seems like a fair assumption. Reporting. 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 Although speaking of CNC, um, one of the defining features of that series was, of course, the soundtrack created by the inimitable Frank Klepacki. And he wrote the music for this game as well. Okay, interesting. So there's like this defined path. I think the harvesters maybe just go to the bottom right corner and then just mess around there. They do that in CNC as well. Is it because you're looking at the fog of war or because you're not looking at the unit itself? What's what's the actual trigger there? Is it just that the camera is entirely black and it's not updating as much and there's more time to update unit movement or is it literally just like this game where it's reporting. Affirmative. Reporting. You know, he's moving at a certain speed. Affirmative. Atreides harvester deployed. Okay. Reporting. 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 So units in this game definitely move slower when you're not looking at them. I... I don't know if there's an actual difference when looking at the Fog of War, though. Reporting. If I had to guess, I'd say it probably doesn't make the same difference in this game. And it would be difficult to test because as we've just proven, the amount of spice that's being harvested, the speed of harvest is just not deterministic even if their path is, so I don't have a meaningful way to test that. I don't think. Reporting. So, we'll get above 27 here, 2700. Your mission is complete. That was one second! Why was that one second? That should have been five. Is it because I had two harvesters? Two, two harvesters in refineries at the time? Is it the speed of the increasing credits? Does that make the difference? But no, wait, this is the this is the first test that we've done after starting a new campaign and then going from mission one to mission two. So, is that the quickest way to finish, to get the win condition and then the finish on mission two? Do we have to go through mission one first and then do two? Or 
let's do that same test again. Let's see what we get. House Atreides. Because that one second, that is the quickest uh, mission finish time that I've seen so far at all in any of my playing, in any of my testing. I guess we sit and wait again. Restart the timer. Because if I have to go through mission one to get to mission two to get the one second finish on mission two, I can do that. It's about two minutes to go through this. Mission two is only about four minutes. So if I can just reliably slash, you know, four seconds of time off mission two, it's worth spending a couple of mission, a couple of minutes doing it in um in uh, messy about it mission one as well. Because there's no rules about how you start doing a certain mission, how you get to a certain mission in the ILs. So you're allowed to save the game and reload it and all sorts of stuff. Our base is under attack. And it really only matters for mission 2 IL, this stuff. What were my other theories? What else did I want to test tonight? I think we're getting to the end of what I'm going to do tonight. I guess we can test the movement of units with different CPU cycles for DOSBox. Like if I time... If I set a tank or something to move a certain set distance and then time the amount of time it takes to finish that Your route. Is complete. And then do the same test but with massively increased cycles and see if there's any difference there. That will put that question to bed, so we'll do that after that, after this. That's right, yeah, because some, some CNC units are just doing like a, a, a patrol kind of thing. Speed track of the tank. 40k's an hour. Um, let's just rush this. No, let's not just rush this. Let's keep it as consistent as possible because I built concrete for everything. Reporting. Acknowledge. Report. Acknowledge. Construction complete. Construction complete. Maybe another day I can test whether the speed of... Because if I can do the same thing again here and get a one second end timer for this mission, that's all I need to know. In terms of speed running the ILs. Reporting. Affirmative. Construction complete. Acknowledged. Affirmative. It would be useful to know if Reporting. that doesn't make a difference. Acknowledged. Affirmative. Construction complete. Because that simply means that doing this this particular mission, this this way of doing the run, will be faster. Because I won't have to build the concrete and all that. Um, that won't matter for the record time. That will matter for the amount of time I have to spend doing it to do any uh, speed run. Reporting. Construction complete. Affirmative. So. Construction complete. Reporting. 
Affirmative. Re acknowledge. Report. Affirmative. Construction complete. Reporting. Acknowledge. Reporting. Acknowledge. Reporting. Affirmative. Reporting. See, I kind of struggle with um, games that do things like that. Construction complete. Um, like have all these prescriptive things going off in the background that you you have to learn in order to effectively play the game. But you can't because it's all it's all happening in the background. It's all you know, it's not visible. Reporting, acknowledge, reporting. Um, I prefer games like this that are more honest. I guess in a sense they, everything about this game is visible. The AI is very predictable. It's very basic. Um, if it was smarter, that would be a more interesting game. But it can be made smarter without hiding the way that it works. Um, Construction complete. Where I'm going with this rant is Reporting. I do own Red Alert Aftermath, which is like the extra... I think there were two uh, expansion packs for Red Alert. There was Aftermath and then Counter-Strike, I think, was the, the middle one. What am I doing? Building a refinery. Reporting. And... I liked playing Reporting. Aftermath specifically because there, there were all the, the new units and things. Um, like the Tesla tanks and all that. Reporting. Reporting. Uh, but the problem for me was some of the missions. So I forget which one it is, but there's a mission where you've got Tanya, who's the you know the, the, the commando in Red Alert, and you have to keep her alive throughout the entire mission, or you fail it immediately. And it's this multi-step. Um, mission where you've got to run in, you've got to destroy some stuff, you've got to establish a base, you've got to build up your base, you've got to build up your army, and then go attack the enemy units. Um, but like 20 or 30 minutes into that mission, there's still scripted stuff happening in the background that just comes and surprises you. And it's meant to be part of the difficulty of the level, but it's just, it was so frustrating. Construction Part of it is because... What I'm talking about is from years and years ago, so I may be misremembering this, but there was a mission in After Strike, After Strike, Aftermath, where like 20 minutes into it, the enemy rocks up suddenly from the bottom of the map where your base is, there's like a tiny bit of water and then land for your... Reporting. What did I just say about AI being dumb and honest? There you go. Anyway, basically, I was doing okay in this mission and saved my game, thinking, okay, this is a good point to save. Turns out I had saved just before a scripted part where a huge navy suddenly appears from the bottom of the screen and starts attacking your base. The idea being you're meant to have built up a navy or something to protect against that little bit of water or whatever. Um, and that completely screwed up my game because I'd saved just moments before they appeared. There was no way I had time to load and you know, build a navy and fight them. And they just go straight for, you know, the unit that I had to keep alive to finish the game. So, load the save, unit dies, immediately fail. Reload the save, there's nothing I can do. Um, I really detest stuff like that in games. It's, that is fake difficulty. That made me never play the game again. I haven't played any of the actual missions in Red Alert aftermath since then because it's just pointless it's a waste of time i can't fight against that yes sir moving out yes sir moving this game out. i can understand i can understand the different missions i understand what's going on and it's all very limited it's all very <sighs> deterministic's the wrong word it's all very predictable but stuff like you know Scripted stuff in the background, that's that's less less so reporting. less enjoyable. Reporting. Reporting. Oh interesting, I've accidentally kept the carryall.
So the way the carryalls work, you know, it actually meant to be able to keep them for a few missions. Uh, around mission five, I think you start being able to build the facility that builds carryalls. And obviously the use of them is that they just fly around until they're needed, and then they come and pick up harvesters from refineries. They pick harvesters up from spice fields, fly them around. Um, and if you have a repair facility, they will fly half damaged units to the repair so that they can be repaired so you can keep using them. Um, in the first few missions, the only time you really see them is when you place a new refinery, because you place a refinery and then because you get a free harvester with it, that's another thing that carried over into the CNC. You build the refinery, you get a free harvester, but it doesn't appear in the structure itself. It flies on screen in a carryall, and then the carryall's meant to do like a couple loops and then disappear. But sometimes, if you get the timing right, and I'm not sure what the actual rules are on the timing, what actually happens is. <clears throat> if you give it enough work to do, it never actually goes away. Your mission is complete. Okay, that's a 1.8, but it was pretty damn low. And definitely the second lowest time that I've recorded. The lowest time was the previous run. So, that's it. That is the answer to getting a super quick uh, mission end time. You started your game, you go through mission 1, and then you start your run, your IL run to do mission 2 and finish mission 2. I think that's all I came here to learn today. Because that saves me up to four seconds on its own. Because I can now guarantee that I can get a really low, a really quick end time to mission two. And I've also answered the question with how the other guy got such a quick overall IL for mission two. And simply because he got a really good, really lucky cycle on uh, the enemy harvester. Okay. So it's not the answer that I wanted. but it is still a very useful answer. Like, I was hoping for something, hoping for something way more deterministic that I... you know, left the, left the enemy harvester covered by fog of war or something to that effect. Something that I could actually control. Um, but it turns out it seems to be random. Um, no, I don't want to do mission three. That's basically my bugbear at the moment for speedrunning mission three, because you've got... For starters, you get the entire map, as opposed to the little map you get for mission one and two. Um, Warning. Worm sign. You get sandworms in this mission which are particularly unpredictable if you're playing as Atreides. Reporting. Reporting. And you also only have quads Reporting. Reporting. and trikes. Reporting. Reporting. You don't get tanks in this mission, which means you have to... Oh, and there's no credits goal for mission three. The only way to win mission three is by destroying the enemy base. And that is an absolute pain to do when you have such light weapons. Reporting. So. Right, I wanted to do the cycles check. So the cycles check is probably going to be the last thing that I do tonight. Let's go back to my harvester race. So, what I was going to do... 
let's illustrate this better. Let's switch to the other view that I've got. So we can see the cycles. Reporting. So we'll do this with the harvesters because they don't change speed when they're off screen. Can tell him to move here. Three, two, one, go. Acknowledged. And what I'll do is I'll stop the timer when stop here goes red, meaning that he has actually stopped. So, 19.5. So, Reporting. same test, I'm going to bump up the cycles pretty high. So that's almost four times. And yeah, scrolling speed is now absolutely uncontrollable. But we'll tell him to move here as well. So what I'm expecting is exactly the same time. Three, two, one, go. Acknowledged. Yeah, that is the same time. So, let's go the other direction. What is the smallest number of cycles that we can effectively run this game on? How low can we go before we start hearing glitches? Okay, interesting. So the game is definitely running slower. Definitely running slower. Affirmative. Acknowledged. So four and a half thousand. This is. This feels like about the same speed as I've always played it. Oh wow! It takes a while to load. So four four nine one cycles. Three two one go. So what I'm establishing here is the minimum number of cycles you need to run Dune 2 smoothly. So 20.73. That's that's within margin of error. So that was 4.91. So I've got a uh, a notepad window off to the side here that I'm writing all these notes into. Now, was that actually slower, or was that just me messing things up a bit? Let's give the same amount one more go. Reporting. Three, two, one, go. Acknowledged. And we established two hours ago that it doesn't matter if it's in view or not. That's 21.22, so okay, so this is a bit slower. So let's pump it up to about 6,000. Three, 
reporting. And I know this is super boring to watch, but this is this is what I wanted to do today. Three, two, one, go. Acknowledged. So what I'm looking for here is a time of 19 and a half seconds or thereabouts. Nineteen point eight. So around six thousand cycles is about where you want DOSBox to be running. Reporting. Re reporting. Reporting. Beyond that, it doesn't really make a difference. I mean, it's definitely going to take longer to load and scroll around a bit. That's a little slower, and the scrolling speed's obviously a bit low. So what it comes down to, though. is finding a cycle setting that's above 6,000 that if you use this sort of scrolling is comfortable for you. I want it a little bit faster. Like I had it about, you know, 12,000. And you want to tweak it sort of as you play the game as well, so. That's pretty fast. All right. I might have to call it a night. It's getting towards 10 p.m. and I have work tomorrow. Um, this has been good. Like I said, it's not the answer that I wanted, but it is an answer that I can work with. So yeah, thanks for hanging out, guys. Um, whoever the hell is still sitting there still watching this thank you very much for hanging out thanks for, thanks if you come along from um from oiler's stream it's really great to see you guys um give me a follow i'll do more of this stuff at some point um i do want to get back into properly speed running this game as well i haven't done that for a few months now um and especially armed with this new knowledge from tonight i am definitely coming back for the mission to world record so Thanks for watching, thanks for hanging out, and I will see you guys at some point in the future.